Julian became familiar with the real estate investor community as a frequent speaker on self-directed IRA, investing at several real estate investment associations, as well as many local realtor associations and real estate brokerages. Having insider knowledge of financial services and self-directed IRA industry, Julian will share his insights and experience from working with countless clients and to motivate real estate investors to build tax-free wealth from doing what they know and love, real estate investing. Welcome, Julian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen, and thank you to your team for allowing me to speak. And uh, by the way, how I met Kristen is I actually bought a house from her last year, so that's how we uh, got to talking. And then she mentioned the fact that she was putting together this uh, this investment team, this, these little uh, seminars, and I said, well, I, I have a, a content expertise, uh, can I share that? And so uh, I'm here representing the IRA club today. I, I know the owner, and I, I do marketing for him, and this is what it, that looks like. So uh, obviously, I'm Julian Acosta, and your first question should be, who the heck is that, right? They say a lot of, uh, you can know a lot about a person by the company they keep, and this is the company I keep. This is why I wake up in the morning. This is my wife, who's a school teacher in Coral Springs, my son, who just uh, graduated from Navy Boot Camp, and he's uh, now going to be a linguist in uh, Monterey, California, and my daughter, who's in college, uh, Jillian, Zachary, and Lori, and uh, they are why I get up in the morning. My history is pretty simple. I'm, I've been a corporate slug. Hey, Drew. Uh, I've been a corporate slug for 25 years. I've been a marketing uh, person, executive for a number of uh, Fortune 50 and other companies. Uh, I was director of marketing for uh, uh, American Express Financial Advisors, so I got a real good idea about financial planning and all that kind of stuff. Terrific company, very ethical, the highest percentage of uh, CFPs, which is the kind of person that I think you should deal with if you're gonna be doing financial planning. But even then, I would see an occasional memo, we're pushing uh, this mutual fund this week. You know, So I, I just kind of started wondering, is that really in the, in the interest of, uh, of the client? Uh, sometime later, I was uh, director of business development for a company called Entrust, which is an administrator for uh, self-directed IRAs. And it was interesting because uh, it was through that relationship that I started learning about self-directed IRAs and became a student of it, really. Uh, and uh, one of the things I always asked my, uh, my leader in the company was, what's this thing I keep hearing about checkbook IRAs? Oh, so you can't do that, the sky will fall. You can't do that. And, and obviously, I learned that you could. But anyways, that's my background. I'm also... An artist, I paint, I show, I draw, I cook, I garden, I build stuff. <laughs> so I like to do creative stuff. And, and I think that's part of my passion of being, you know, like a, get, seeing a house that's all beat up and transforming that to affordable high housing. That really excites me. Uh, here's my disclaimer. So uh, while I am not a certified <laughs> public accountant <laughs> or an attorney, I like that person. It's <laughs> my barrister thing. Uh, but I am uh, a trained and experienced self-directed IRA investor, and I do invest in real estate, and that's the house that I bought from Kristen. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm here to share my insights uh, for, with you about how you can accelerate your uh, retirement wealth uh, tax-free, and I did say tax-free, right? So one of the things I want to start, so we all kind of get into the Vulcan mind mold here, is to kind of have a little group exercise. And so I'd like for you to repeat after me, okay? So this right here, ready? The important thing, thing is, is not how, how much, much money, money you make, make but how, how much, much money, money you keep. keep. And Dennis Blitz, who owns the IRA Club, said that. But this is the theme that I want you to you know, think about tonight. It's like uh, what I'm talking about, what Drew's talking about, is about you know, preservation of wealth. And it's by taking advantages of the rules, the laws that are available to us to not pay as much tax as we could otherwise if we didn't know better. So think about this throughout tonight, all right? So, I don't know what you guys know about IRAs, but this is a real simple back to square one uh, definition. I want to put some things up here, and then I want to talk about them, right? So an IRA is like a savings account. It's not an investment. It's a thing that you put investments in, right? And it's got tax incentives. Back in 74, when they created these things, I got a feeling the government knew that Social Security was not going to be around for very long. And they got to, how do we spike this little thing about getting people to save more? So they created tax incentives, right? thus the IRA. When they watched a little bit longer, or late, a little bit later, about 1986, when people still weren't savings, they sweetened the pie with the Roth IRA, which has been claimed to be the best idea in retirement planning ever, right? So I'll talk about a little bit more about that. So savings account with tax incentives that you direct, okay? <clears throat> ever since the beginning, you should be able to direct. Now the trick is, and here's the, the definition of self-directed IRA, there is none, right? That's a marketing term. An IRA is an IRA is an IRA. It all matters is what custodian you have. 
if you have a traditional custodian like a Merrill Lynch, Schwab, all great companies, but they got a business model that means push a button, they make money, right? Uh, alternative assets are a little bit more difficult, a little bit more complicated, and not everybody is set up in the back room to do real estate transactions or alternative investments. So you should be able to have your money at a custodian that allows non-traditional assets like the ones we're gonna talk about, real estate, lending, all those kind of things. And obviously it's for your retirement, so it's a long-term gig. This is not a make money, spend money thing. You're trying to build wealth, and thus the, the topic, accelerating your retirement wealth, okay? Lots of different accounts. We're gonna talk about two, really the individual retirement accounts, right? These are for small businesses and so forth. Great products, okay, but these are anybody can have. It's always earned income. If you're over 50, you've got a little catch of provision. And this is really not kind of nominal, but here's the important thing is that when you're, if you have a traditional IRA or have worked at, at a company like I have, I worked at several companies and had 401ks, then you can transition to be uh, into a traditional IRA. You gotta stop investing by the time you're 70 and a half years old. You know, everybody knows we're all living longer. Sometimes people are living longer than the time that they worked. So they gotta think about what are they gonna do in their retirement. But if you don't start taking your money out at 70 and a half, you start getting penalized, right? Minimum required distributions, right? So if you're sitting on, on a bunch of money, then you're gonna be taxed or you gotta get it out or do something with it, so that's a problem. Unlike a Roth, where you don't have that. You can return, you can invest till the cows come home, which, which I happen to like, and, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So, to Roth or not to Roth, I think Shakespeare said that once, but this is uh, the basic model. You can't get away from having a custodian. Any IRA has a custodian. The IRS uses them as a gatekeeper to make sure that they're applying the rules, respecting the rules and so forth, right? So in, in with, with regard to a traditional IRA, very simply, it's pre-tax money. You don't, you don't touch it, it goes right into your account, you, know, you invest it, whatever, whatever you do. Years later, you've got a tax bill. So if you're thinking that you're gonna be better off or not as well off, that's a consideration of conversation for your CPA, right? Of whether you not or not you should have a lot of money in your traditional IRA or, or you should transition to a Roth as I did. I've transitioned my about 95% of my portfolio to a Roth now. So what it looks like is I put post-tax dollars, it does what it does, and then years later I take it out and I like that. No tax bill forever. There's never a limit on what you can get, uh, what you can earn inside of an IRA and, 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 you know, look at this. What if you bought a house, like I bought, you know, several, and let's say they're, I typically pay 30 to 50,000. I'm gonna keep that thing, and I'm making $1,300 a month rent, right? And I'm gonna keep that thing for 20 years. It's gonna be worth, what's a number? 200, 300, I don't know, all right? So if, that, if, my, if the property was in a traditional IRA, and the appreciation was such that I would have a big, tax bill when I took that money out, when I needed to take it out or I'd be penalized, right? Versus a Roth, it does what it does. It's gonna appreciate, I'm making all this money back into my IRA, I'm building wealth tax-free. I come out, I have no tax at all. Okay, I, I kinda like that. When you made the transition from the traditional IRA to the Roth IRA, <coughs> did you have to pay taxes? You have to pay the man right there. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that tax you. But it's earned income and you paid your tax back at all. The, the beautiful thing about this, you know, horrible economy, if you could say there was a beautiful thing, is that a lot of people went down on a tax bracket or two. That's whenever, you know, and, I, and I'm like, I just turned 59, okay, and I've been around the corporate rat race a bunch, right, and I've been good years and not so good years and laid off and downsized and you name it, right, and it's in those times where you be, have to be strategic, and that's when you shift from traditional to a Roth, because you're paying at a lower tax bracket. Okay, there's no questions here, right? To Roth or not to Roth? So, do you pay on an acorn or do you pay on a tree? And that's really the imagery that you gotta think about. So the difference that the IRA can make, this is what my last argument for why you should do this, and I'm not saying you should do this with all your deals, but start building your retirement, okay? Two people start investing the same age, same amount, same returns. Outside of the IRA, nice little chunk of change. Inside of the range, inside the IRA, very nice chunk of change. How much? A lot. I'd like to have that found money in my IRA, okay? So it makes sense, just the tax advantages alone. All the ways we're gonna talk about in a minute about getting into real estate or out of real estate, you can do with an IRA. Diversification. These are all the, or I should say most of the asset classes 
that uh, you can invest in. So in terms of when you talk to Schwab and they say, oh, you can't do that, tell them they're lying, okay? But all these things in purple are ones I have done. These are the things that I've done to grow my retirement portfolio 300% in the last five years. You can do this. I'm not a rocket science. This is, this is pretty simple stuff. Do you have a question? I, I did, uh, on the last screen, actually. Um, the difference in the money, why, why is that such? Is it because of the interest that you're getting taxed on? You're not being taxed. <coughs> so strictly that 10% right. interest that you're not being taxed on. Is right. The well, and the growth. Thousand. And the growth. While, a, while, while an investment is in an IRA, should I do the questions later? Yeah, do at the end. That's okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> sorry, I should have did the rules. But anyways, <laughs> the, the purple are the ones that I've done. I've done mostly lending, uh, more than anything. I've done hard money loans, 15%, armchair investing. I mean, it's as simple as that. I sign my name, they send in interest rate checks into my uh, into my account, okay? it's it's. I have a company that, that does all the due diligence, they say, here's the property, here's the executive summary, here's the comps, do you want to play? And I say yes or no. And I write a check and it's done, right? And into my IRA every month come the interest checks. I've done flips, I've done wholesale, I now own two properties that are rentals. I want to have a couple more this year. So uh, that's what I do. But there, there can be way more exotic investments. I mean, I know people that have started seahorse farms off the coast of, of, uh, of Costa Rica, you know, or Bull sperm is a big deal, apparently, in some neighborhoods. You know, I mean, all kinds of crazy stuff. You know, you know, and debt, any kind of debt instrument, can be invested in. <clears throat> so, who should consider this? See if you can relate to at least one of these categories. Interested in taking control of your financial future? Anyone here want to ship all their money to Wall Street? They're nice guys. Mm -hmm. I don't think so, right? That's one of the things that I have to do is to take control uh, of my financial future. Accelerating growth, the returns that you were talking about earlier, you can't make in mutual funds. Or if you can, show me and I'll invest in them. But I'm making, I've never made less than 15%, and I've made some 75% in that range. That is what is going to allow me to accelerate my retirement wealth. That kind of stuff, self-directed IRAs allow you to do that. I'm not sure whether anybody, if anyone likes Mitt Romney or not, it doesn't matter. But he's got a self-directed IRA with $100 million in it, tax-free forever. Okay. It works, and he did it with his ventures and, and so forth, but uh, this stuff works. Diversifying <clears throat> hard assets, real estate versus, you know, the dot boom, you know, remember a pet.com and things like that. I mean, they just vanished. They just vaporized. In fact, the, some of the, the charts that uh, Jason just had up here, the 100-year average for return on investments is like 1.25 for stocks, for the stock market, right? And I just I had an article here that was kind of interesting. It said, Wall Street Journal a couple days ago, the title is, sorry, Bad News for Boomers, right? So you have this boomer generation that's moving through time, right, and just taking everything with it. Uh, and so here's, a, here's an interesting thing. The problem in a nutshell, the ratio of retirees to active workers used to be 10 to 1. Now it's 1 to 10. One new worker for 10 retirees. Not a pretty picture, right? As retirees sell their stocks and, and their bonds to support themselves, there will be fewer younger investors to buy those securities keeping a lid on prices. Meanwhile, the strong demand for boomers and a limited supply of workers will boost the price of goods and services uh, that, that, that the boomers need. It gets cheerier than this, but I'll just leave it there. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so diversification, very important, and you can do that. And of course, our mantra, keeping more of what you earn. So how does this work? All IRAs work the same way. You open an IRA, you fund it with your earned income, you choose what you want to invest in, and you direct the custodian. Now, buying 100 shares of IBM is the same thing. You're directing the custodian to act on your behalf for the benefit of your IRA, right? And then finally, you play by the rules. And the rules are essentially no self-dealing. I have some information that if you would like, just give me your contact information. I'll email it to you. It's a little uh, thing on a lot of the information about uh, the IRA club, several different plans. I didn't want to like burn up all this paper. And also I have a two-pager on all the definitions, concepts that I'll be talking about here. So please just give me your contact information and I can do that for you. The rules are simple. It's basically no self-dealing. So let's say you had a, a condo on the beach, right, that you had bought in your IRA. First of all, it's titled that way. It's not titled as my IRA or, or my property. It wouldn't be Julian Acosta's, you know, on the deed. It would be my IRA. 
So I couldn't go to that little place, that little beachside uh, condo, and stay there, because that would be a prohibited transaction. I would be benefiting from what is owned by the IRA, or I couldn't go there and work on it, so do work on it, right? Those are things that I'm, I'm that sweat equity is such that the, the IRA is benefiting from my work, right? So no self-dealing is really the principal one, okay? But all that stuff is spelled out in the stuff that I'll send you. So how to invest in real estate. So let's say you have an IRA or you know somebody that has an IRA, could be a, you know, a, a relative, could be a friend, could be a partner, right? And all the ways that you can get an IRA are the same ways that you can buy an IRA. The good news is that all this stuff is not new. It's just the same thing. If you have the money, you could just buy it. It's going to be needed, like I told you. It's going to be in the name of the IRA. Here's where it gets sexy. Very exciting, where you can actually partner with yourself. So let's say I had an IRA with $50,000, and I had $50,000 cash. You have an uh, unequal. Uh, it's basically a, a tenants in common ownership where 50% where is owned by the IRA and 50% is owned by me, right? The smart way to do that is to create an LLC and then fund that LLC from both sources. All the taxes, all the costs, all the expenses are prorated share and the profits as well, okay? Very, very simple, done all the time. Same idea with partners. You three guys see a property he's selling, you all want to get together, create a strategic partnership, fund it however you fund it, Tenants in common and you own it. Simple as that. IRAs or non IRAs. Doesn't matter. How you do your taxes is, is what you need to see CPA for. So if it's you know cash funds or, or IRA funds or Roth funds or whatever, then that's you know what you gotta pay attention to. Obviously, you can invest in an LLC, which is important when, when I talk about the uh, checkbook IRA in a minute. You but your IRA can borrow funds. I don't know if you knew that, but <coughs> How to leverage your IRA. This is the largest uh, non recourse lender in the country. Uh, been around since 1927, lending since 206 to, to IRAs. But uh, you can actually leverage your IRA. You can actually buy a property, and there's criteria about it how much reserves you have, how much putting you're down, all that kind of stuff. But uh, the, the terms are, uh, are pretty attractive. They have, they have a five year arm, and they have a uh, a 25 year uh, fixed rate. And the, and the rates are very, very competitive. And they're threes, fours, you know, like that. So um, you can lend funds. Like I said, this is how I got into the market, hard, uh, hard money lender. And there's several companies that can do that for you if you don't want to do all the due diligence and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and any kind of debt instrument that we talked about. Tax liens, tax fees, I bought those uh, as well. So this is what I do the checkbook IRA. And uh, I actually have a fund with my wife's Roth IRA and my son's Roth IRA together, and I, we manage it. I'm the, man, I'm the member, or the manager, rather. And this is one of the quotes that I had. I think this is the ultimate real estate investment tool. And I've looked around. I've done a lot of homework. I don't know what you can do to beat this. I mean, it's like amazing. At the end of the year, I don't even have to file a return on the properties that I own. They're, they're in a Roth. They're tax-free forever. Nothing. Okay, so that's like really... It's really easy. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the structure. Um, you start off with a self-directed IRA, and you have to have an IRS compliant LLC. Okay. So you notice that these two things got here at the same time, right? So this self-directed IRA can't be, you can't own, or you can't invest in something that you already own, so it's got to be created simultaneously. It's got to be done so by a company that knows how to do this, like the IRA club. There's others. And when I was going to do this, I scoured the country in terms of who's, who does it best, who does it cheapest. And the IRA club did it for half the price that I did, <coughs> right? And the other thing is that it can't be your standard SunBiz LLC. It's got to be IRS compliant. You've got to have a lawyer that says, yes, I vetted. You know, this thing has been vetted. It's, it's IRS compliant, so forth. So you uh, invest in the shares of the LLC, members of shares, right? And then you transfer your money to the bank because a state registered uh, wherever you live, LLC can have a bank account, and you literally shift your money lines of regions around the corner from where I live. I have 24-hour 24 24 access, and then I invest in what I choose. It's as simple as that. IRA principal asset is an LLC, and then you shift your money to your account. Okay, so choices. 
I don't have to belabor this. Real estate, tons of choices, diversification, very versatile. Like I said, you can partner with yourself and other people, or you can buy out cash uh, outright, or you know, leverage, all those kinds of things. Very flexible to accommodate any exit strategy. Control, you have access to the funds 24-7. Uh, you manage the checkbook without permission, and I don't have time to belabor the, the issues with custodians sometimes, but um, there are. Uh, or I don't have time to tell that little story. It's my little asterisk reminders. But uh, anyways, there, there are issues. I mean, I had a friend that had a closing on, let's say, Friday, and he called him, called him, you know, you got your all your paperwork, everything's ready, ready. Called him on Friday for the closing. Oh, uh, Sandy's out today, he's sick. But I can put somebody else on it for you, but it'll cost you more money. So you don't have to mess with any of that stuff with a checkbook IRA. No buy direction letter, no sell direction letter, no transactional fees, none of that stuff, okay? Wealth, the structure is provides asset protection. An LLC gives you asset protection, right? The uh, IRA gives you asset protection up to a million dollars against creditors. I buy in a land trust on top of that, so try and find me. Uh, and then, um, you know, the custodial fees and the transactions, gone, have none. Uh, and then, of course, our mantra here is it builds wealth tax-free and you stay with more money. So here's my last profound question. Is that, are you a grasshopper or an ant? Remember that Aesop's fable, right? So here's the grasshopper going through life, just having a great time, not thinking about anything down the road, like, you know, the con this, this, uh, this bringing together of debt and, 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 you know, demographics and all the issues that this country faces. Or in the winter of your life, are you going to be wondering where that last can of cat food is? Because you're hungry, <laughs> right? Or are you going to use the tools available and the teams that, that you have to put together to work to, uh, to get where you want to go? That's the question. So the next steps that I have are go to the IRAclub.com. I have um, stuff here. Can you make sure that everybody gets the three pages? Just pass them down one at a time. The IRA Club, they have webinars, they're a full service resource, they can help you hook up a, 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 an IRA, or they can do the whole uh, IRA LLC or checkbook IRA, or they can do a family one like they did for me, and a whole bunch of other plans, okay? You can call Dennis Blitz at that number, so the contact information has it, you don't have to scroll it, right? And you can start investing in the retirement you deserve before the market gets high. Here's my contact. I do longer seminars with a lot more detail. If anybody's interested, let me know. But uh, it's really about making a strategic decision about what you want to do to preserve your wealth, to live how you want to live when you're no longer working. Thanks for allowing me to talk. Great job. We've got five minutes for questions. If you want to ask him um, or talk to him even afterwards, because he does go into a lot more detail, but at least you get the idea of what he does. Uh, which he was phenomenal at presenting that in a short amount of time. He did a very Thank good job. You. I was impressed. In a hot room. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're real hot when you're standing. It's not as bad when you're sitting. Does anybody have any questions, Spark? <coughs> yeah, absolutely. Sure. So, when you are, are you not tax capital gains on your inside your Roth? Not even when you take it out. No, when you get when you take your money out, that's called a distribution. Right? So any investment inside of an IRA has no tax implications at all. You can buy and sell, buy and sell, all the, you know, it's whatever it is. And whether it's tax deferred or tax free, there's no tax consequences. It's not a taxable event. When you take your money out, it is a taxable event, whether it's a, a traditional IRA, which then you have to pay at your current income bracket. And again, not to get political, I don't care who's in the office of presidency this next term or the next or the next. How many of you think taxes are not going to go up in the future? <laughs> Right? So, so a lot of people are thinking about, well, I'm going to be retiring and it'll be a lower tax bracket and life will be grand. Guess what? They're that grasshopper running down the road. Right. They're, going to get, they're going to get powered. <laughs> yeah. So no tax. No capital gains. It's a no-brainer. I mean, if you've got IRAs, I mean, it's a no-brainer to, to do that. I mean, wealth building today, a lot of people say, oh, well, my job's going to build wealth. Your job's never going to build wealth. There's three ways that are going to build wealth, and that's going to be real estate, um, buying businesses, which is the most risky for the stock market. And I'll tell you why, that being in the real estate business, and I breathe this and love it every single day of my life, I'm very passionate about it, there is no better way than to invest your money is into real estate and build your wealth. None at all. 
I have one quick question. Sure. Sure. And this might, you might need to direct me to a CPA. Right um, <laughs> you said that you don't need to file tax returns, so therefore you're not capturing the depreciation, correct? Well, so how does that? Great question. Because you're in a tax advantage vehicle, so there's pluses and minus. You don't get all the depreciation, but you're not paying tax on it anyway. Right. So, so that's my question. What's the the comparison as yeah. to what you save when you depreciate and what you save with the taxes? I don't know if there would be a number to. Maybe that would be that. you know sharpen your pencil exercise because yeah. it depends on the deal, depends on the comps, depends okay. on a lot of stuff. But but where the source of the money comes from and what your tax implications are inside of an IRA, there are none. Right. The the thing that I that I did, which I thought was to some hopefully dramatic, is that. I would never advocate putting a property in a traditional IRA. Why? Because when that thing grows 10 right. years, 20 years from now, right. you're gonna get hammered. And you're gonna have income, you're gonna need money, and you might have medical expenses, but you know, in a Roth, no brainer. Right. And, and the saying. other thing that I want to talk about too is that in a Roth, for any, you, any wholesalers here? Right? So imagine that you could have a checkbook IRA, put a thousand dollars down on a property, and flip that a million times, right? Because that's really what you could do. Have you you could flip the property. Pardon me? Oh, I'm thinking of a rehabber. Sorry, go ahead. No, on, on a wholesale. Okay, right, right. You put $1,000 okay, yeah. down, yeah. you're yeah. really controlling the property. You're not selling the property. Right. You're selling the deal, okay. right? So you flip the deal, right? So let's say you make $2,000 or $5,000 or whatever, right? right. Tax-free into your account. How many times can you do that forever? It's like you can get 100. I know people have made $100,000 tax-free in one year in their Roth IRA. It's not impossible. Well, in the self-directed IRAs, I'll tell you what, most people don't even know and, and don't even know about it. I'm going to answer one more question. At the end, he's feel free to to, uh, to come to him or Drew or yeah. whatever, okay? Or SEP IRAs. SEP are one of the ones for small businesses. They're great. You can put actually a lot more. It acts like a traditional. You know, you still have that tax hit when you take the money out, unlike a Roth. But yes, you can put you know considerably more money into a SEP IRA. Than, uh, than, a, than a traditional IRA. What is it? 40.